Do you love crock pot recipes as much as I do? And y'all know I love me some crock pot recipes, but you might not be a huge fan of cream of soups. Well, stay tuned because I am sharing eight of the absolute best crock pot recipes that don't use a cream of soup. Hey y'all, I'm Sammy and welcome to my kitchen. Like I said before, I'm sharing my top eight recipes with you all that does not have to have a cream of soup, but that will blow your mind. You definitely wanna watch this video all the way through. These are some tried and true recipes that I absolutely adore, and so will you and your family. So sit back and relax, grab you some sweet tea or whatever you want to drink, and let me do all the cooking. Come on y'all, let's go. All right, y'all, let's make this a creamy Italian sausage and tortellini crock pot soup. All right, y'all, I have my crock pot sprayed. We're gonna go ahead and dump in our cooked Italian, mild Italian sausage. I did drain that. Now keep in mind, you can use ground turkey, ground chicken, ground beef, whatever you wanna use in this if you don't like the Italian sausage. And then we're gonna go ahead and dump in our tortellini. All right, y'all, I don't know where I stopped, but I have the tortellini in there. I've got the carrots, the garlic, everything is in there and the onions. And then I put some Badia Complete on there. And now I'm adding in the spinach. Sometimes my phone wants to record and sometimes it don't. Then goes the diced tomatoes. Going in with the crushed tomatoes. Our chicken broth now. And then I'm gonna add in a half a block of cream cheese that I had left over in the fridge. Cream cheese is not in the recipe, but I think it'll just go perfectly with this creamy tortellini sausage soup. So that's why I'm adding it. On goes the lid. It's gonna cook on high for about four hours. Um, you do wanna just come in and check it periodically if you can, but if not, it'll be fine too. But I'm home today, so I'm gonna come in and stir it every once in a while. All right, y'all, so this has been cooking. It is almost five o'clock right now, so I'm gonna give it a quick stir real easy because <laughs> I don't wanna break up those tortellini. And we're gonna add in our um, heavy whipping cream. So I just have a 16 ounce container. We're gonna go ahead and pour that in there and let that come together. Mm, this smells so good. Look, look at all this yumminess right here. All those carrots and the spinach and the tomatoes. Mm, even Pepper says it's good. <laughs> now this one was delicious. I would say you would definitely want to try this one and that cream cheese just added a little extra something something to it. Definitely give it a try y'all. You won't be disappointed. All right, y'all, so we're getting ready to make some teriyaki meatballs in the crock pot. We're just gonna put all of the meatballs in the bottom of the crock pot. And I did wanna mention the sprayed my crock pot first because this will end up getting sticky. So if you like to use crock pot liners, go ahead and put one of those in and then put everything in on top of that. I'm gonna come in with a handful of brown sugar. If I had to guess, it would probably be a quarter of a cup. And I just have an eight ounce can of pineapple juice here. We're gonna put all of that on there. And now we're gonna come in with our garlic. Y'all know I love my garlic, so. <laughs> um, I would say this is probably total of about a tablespoon. 14 ounce bottle of teriyaki sauce. So we've got everything in there. This is gonna cook on a low for four hours. All right, y'all, so we're home. I've done stirred these and they are amazing. Make these, make them for sure. <laughs> they are so good. They are that perfect combination between the savory and then you got the sweetness from the pineapple juice and the brown sugar. These are to die for. They are so good. I'm just serving mine with some steamed broccoli and some um, uh, white rice and that's going to be supper tonight and it's going to be fantabulous. 
Okay, friends, if y'all are liking the video so far, go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up and leave me a comment below so YouTube knows to keep pushing out my videos. Also, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. It is totally and completely free. Plus, I would absolutely love to have y'all as part of my YouTube family. All right, y'all, so for supper tonight, we're gonna make some crock pot French onion pork chops. Say that five times fast. So we're gonna go ahead and get those in the crock pot. All right, so I'm just gonna put one can down in the bottom. All right, so like I said, these are pretty thick and pretty large. <laughs> so we're gonna set both of those in the bottom and I'm gonna go ahead and get the other two. Okay, so I've got both of those in there. What I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of that second can in between them since I've gotta put the other two on here. And now I'm gonna try to alternate them like this, just to kinda, maybe that'll work. <laughs> All right, so now that we've got the other two chops in there, we're just gonna take the rest of that and go right over the tops of these. Now the original recipe says to add a half a cup of water to it, but since I put two cans of French onion soup mix, I'm not putting the water in there. So we're gonna go ahead put our lid on here and these are gonna cook for about four to five hours on low. So I'm gonna go ahead and do four and then they'll just click over to keep warm. Also, I am home from work and these chops have been on keep warm. They smell absolutely amazing. I know y'all can't really tell it in here, but I know they're gonna fall off the bone. I can already see that bone right there. <laughs> so these are gonna be so tender and so good. And then I'm just making um, a homemade dressing to go with it and a uh, green bean casserole. So that's going to be supper tonight. These were definitely chef's kiss. Mwah, delicious. They were so good, y'all. These crock pot barbecued ribs are going to be your absolute favorite way to make them. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start out, I'm just gonna take both racks of ribs. I'm gonna take this membrane off the back of them. Some of them call them like silver skin or anything, but that's how you get the fall off the bone ribs. They are so good. And then I'll get them seasoned up with this Kinder's bourbon peach, and we're gonna use mustard as a binder. Now that we have the ribs all cleaned up, I just put a sheet of aluminum foil down on my cutting board. We're gonna season both sides. So you just need a little bit of mustard on both sides. And then we're gonna come in with this Kinder's um, bourbon peach seasoning once we get this brushed onto the ribs. You don't need a whole bunch of mustard and you don't taste it either. So it all cooks down. It just holds that on the seasonings and stuff that's what I just it's called a binder <laughs> even my son who despises mustard loves these ribs so make sure that is stuck onto them and we'll flip and do the other side now I have decided to add some of the suckle busters SPG on here it's just salt pepper garlic saves me a step Went ahead and sprayed my crock pot. Now I'm gonna take um, some 100% apple juice. If you have apple cider, that'll work too. But I'm gonna dump probably about four ounces of apple juice into the bottom of this crock pot. Now we're just gonna start by standing these ribs up. I do the thickest part of the rib down and kind of stand it up until I get the other ones in there. That way they can kind of snuggle up to each other <laughs> and we'll put this last one in and I'll kind of put them to where they're not like directly laying down in the crock pot but they're kind of not sitting on the bottom either next step is to put some barbecue sauce in between each set of ribs we're not gonna coat them in barbecue because we're gonna do that when we take them out of the crock pot and then into the broiler for a little bit just to get them nice and crispy. Now these are gonna go on low for six to seven hours. Now these are gonna get cooked on low for six to seven hours. All right, y'all, these have cooked 
pretty much all day. So I've had them on low for about six hours. They are already starting to come off the bone. That's how you know that they're done. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these out and put them on a lined baking sheet. I just lined it with um, tin foil and then we'll put the barbecue sauce all over the top. All right, so we've got the ribs on out. We've got them laid on the bacon sheet. We are just gonna come in with our barbecue sauce and go right over the top, give them a little brush, put them into the broiler and let those get nice and browned up a little bit. That way that barbecue sauce kind of sinks into the meat. All right, y'all, here are those ribs. I just pulled them out from underneath the broiler we're gonna let them sit here a second, and then we're gonna get our plates ready. If y'all love ribs as much as my family does, you definitely want to give this recipe a try. It is absolutely the best rib recipe ever. Trust me on this one. This crock pot pulled pork will soon become your new favorite because it is versatile for so many different suppers. So let's go ahead and get to making it. Now I'm gonna set my roast in here fat side up so I can get that seasoned. Put in a little bit of Badia Complete, some buttery poultry blend. It's good on everything though, don't let the name fool you. <laughs> and then we're gonna add in some bourbon peach by Kinders too, this stuff is so good. Now that we've got that, I'm gonna just pat that down a little bit. We're gonna flip this roast over and do the same thing to this side. So now that we have both sides seasoned, I'm gonna take that other half or so of that onion. I'm gonna lay it right over the top of this pork roast. Now this is a pork, lo pork loin, if I can talk right. <laughs> this is the only liquid that we're gonna put in here. I've got about a tablespoon of beef bouillon mixed in with about a quarter cup of water. Trust me, this is all the liquid you are gonna need because this is gonna cook down and make a nice broth. When I get home, it'll be shreddable and good to go. So this is gonna cook on low anywhere from eight to 10 hours. I'm gonna go ahead and set mine for 10. That way I know it'll be completely shreddable by the time I get home. So just got home. This is flipped over to keep warm. And I told y'all it was gonna have a lot of broth to it, and it sure does. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this out and shred it, and I'll bring you back in just a second. All right, so we've got our pork all shredded up nicely, as y'all can see. And now we're gonna go ahead and start putting these delicious pulled pork sandwiches together. I just whipped up a quick little batch of coleslaw, and once I put that on top of my pulled pork, I just drizzle whatever my favorite barbecue sauce is or whatever I have in the fridge to use. I just drizzle that right on over the top. And this evening, I just served it with some tater chips. No harm, no foul, but y'all, this one is so good, you definitely have to give it a try. Also, if you like this video, please make sure you give me a thumbs up and think about hitting that subscribe button and becoming part of my YouTube family. I would absolutely love to have y'all. Now I know this three packet pot roast will soon become your new favorite way to make a pot roast in the crock pot. It is so good, y'all into a sprayed crock pot. I'm starting out with about a half a cup of diced up onions. Now, since we have already seasoned our roast, we're just laying them on into the crock pot. I'm using two chuck roast. I, this is enough to feed my crew here, but if it's just two of you, I would just make a smaller one and only use one. But if you like having extras like me, where you can put it in the freezer for another meal, definitely go ahead and make two because you can do vegetable soup, vegetable beef soup, anything you want. But now that we have our roast in the crock pot, we're going to go ahead and make our broth mixture. This is where the three packets come in, or in my case, I'm using six because I have two roast. So into two cups of water, I dumped two packets of Italian seasoning mix, two package of ranch 
mix and two packets of brown gravy mix. We'll just give that a good old stir. Now keep in mind, if you're only using one roast, you only need three of the packets. You just pour that right on over the top and then start adding in all the yumminess. So we're gonna go ahead and put our taters and our carrots right over the top, as much or as little as you want. You could even put in mushrooms in here or any vegetables that you would want. You could do like green peppers if you wanted them in here or anything that you could think of or vegetables that you might like to put in there. Everything is good to go because it makes it so yummy. But like I said, I just stuck with the carrots and taters for my pot roast. That's what I grew up eating. And of course the onions, but I'm just trying to get everything in here to where I know that it'll, you know, won't stick to the side. Now it is very important that you season up your veggies because they're not down in that broth. So I used Badia Complete and of course some salt and pepper. Those were the only things I put on there. But y'all, this was seriously absolutely delicious. I love a good old pot roast. It is absolutely rib sticking and belly filling, which are two of my favorite words. <laughs> now I cook this on low for about 10 hours. The longer you can cook it, the better a chuck roast will turn out. But at least eight hours, honestly. But if you can get up to 10, that's what you need to do. And you can see as I'm pulling it out of the crock pot right here, how it is fall apart tender and you definitely want it this way mm, it is so good and y'all if you have leftovers make you a pot roast sandwich it is so good <laughs> and those vegetables were tender they actually fell down into the broth a little bit while it was cooking which was perfect because it just those taters just soaked up everything when i tell y'all that my family gets so excited when I make this I'm not fibbing because they are a meat and taters kind of guys let me say that <laughs> but we're just gonna go ahead and get us a plate and sit down and have some supper together as a family I keep it simple when I serve it I just put a little bit of parsley on the top just to make it look pretty and fancy nothing wrong with that and I made some homemade yeast rolls and that's what we dipped down into that broth because you got to have something to sop up the broth or is it just me <laughs> this one everyone will love trust me on it even the ones that don't like veggies they'll like these because it tastes so so good y'all now everybody knows you gotta have some creamy mac and cheese for any holiday supper. So we're gonna go ahead and make this one right on in the crock pot. So into a seven quart sprayed crock pot, we are gonna dump in 16 ounces of par cooked noodles. They've been cooked to al dente. We are gonna add in six tablespoons of cubed up butter and we're gonna stir that together until everything melts. I am also gonna add in my pepper, about a teaspoon and about a half a teaspoon of salt because I'm using salted butter. Now we're just gonna stir that until that butter is melted. Now we're gonna take a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk right over to the top. We're gonna add in a half a cup of whole milk, two cups of half and half, eight ounces of cubed up Velveeta, and three and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheeses. I'm using a white New York sharp and just a yellow extra sharp. We're gonna save the other half a cup to put right on the top of it when it's almost done cooking. Now we're just gonna stir this and blend it all together. Put our lid on it. This is gonna cook on low for two to three hours. So this has cooked the two hours and I kind of come around about an hour and a half into it or an hour actually, about half the cook time and I kind of stirred it around the edges because I noticed it was browning. But now we're just gonna top it with the remaining half a cup of cheese. And then we'll just let this get all ooey gooey and melty, all the good words. Mo cheese, mo better. <laughs> So we're just gonna let this get happy and melt on down. Here is this mac and cheese. It is still sizzling. 
and it is going to be perfect. Ooey, gooey, and cheesy. So, so good. I was so happy with the way this turned out. I had never made a crock pot mac and cheese before, but I was determined to come up with a recipe. And this is the one that I used. So my recipe will be linked down below all right, with so all of the other recipes in today's in video. So for this, you will need it. All right, y'all. So we are getting ready. Let's make some French dips in the crock pot. These are the three ingredients you'll need. Um, some people only say you'll need two, but I like to switch it up a little bit. So I use a can of beef consomme and a can of French onion soup mixes with my beef chuck roast. So we're going to go ahead, get everything put into the crock pot. Okay, so to the bottom of the crock pot, I am going to throw in some chopped frozen onions though because I like having my meat something to sit on. <laughs> All right, y'all, so I just am putting a little bit of the frozen onion in the bottom of my crock pot because I like getting something in there. That way my meat has something to rest on while it's cooking. But you totally do not have to do this step. It's completely up to you. And now we're just gonna go ahead and put this roast in here. I seasoned one side, so we're gonna put that in down. And now we're just gonna season this side of it. And I love my badia complete. And now we're just gonna put the beef consomme all over that. And the same with the French onion. And now we're just gonna put our lid on here and this is gonna cook for up to 10 hours on low. Okay, y'all, so we have all of our shredded roast beef right here, and we've got our au jus, so we're gonna go ahead and get these French dip sandwiches put together. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and give me a subscribe, because I would absolutely love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Do you love crock pot recipes as much as I do? Well, <laughs> no, that's not it either. Ah, why do I do this in the morning? I should do this in the evening. Okay. I have hair. <laughs> Seriously, Diane, pull it together. <clears throat> I got cars going by in the window. Yeah, it's gonna be a great day. Okay, it's gonna be a good day. God's got me. I'm on the Jesus train, let's go. Do y'all know Jesus loves y'all too? I love you, but he loves you more. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. I truly hope you enjoyed it and you got some new crock pot inspiration recipe ideas <laughs> from this video. If you loved this video, please give me a thumbs up. That truly helps me out as well as commenting below because it lets everybody know on YouTube that this is some content that you wanna see and it spreads my video out more. To subscribe is absolutely free. And if you hit that bell notification, you'll never miss another one of my videos. If you are in need of prayer, please let me know below and I would be honored to pray for you all. But until next time, I wish you nothing but the very best. God bless. Bye.